Hey students and addicts, this is Dr. Dan Baker, and in today's video I'm going to go through some fairly basic uh, problems using the graphical method to draw shear and moment diagrams. We have to be able to crawl before we can walk, right? So let's go ahead and get started with something fairly straightforward. The next one will be a little bit more advanced, and I'll kind of hopefully as you're looking at these examples, build up your skills, making sure you're practicing these, right? The only way to really know where your misconceptions lie is to practice them. And so for the first beam, we are going to have a vertical support force here at B, so not at A, but at B. Let's call this um, B sub Y. There's going to be a vertical force coming downward here at C. This is going to be equal to 20 pounds. And then a little bit bigger force over here at D, 30 pounds. And then finally, a vertical support force over at E. Okay, E sub Y. Now, one thing to make sure that you don't make for an assumption, as you take a look at this problem, you might say, well, there's 20 on the left, there's 30 on the right, that must mean that BY is 20 and EY is 30. Uh, they might be, in fact, they're not, um, but you need to prove it, okay? So the only way we know to basically prove this is to go ahead and set up some equations of equilibrium, okay? So I'm going to sum my moments. In this case, I'm gonna sum them at point B, so I don't need to include by in that moment calculation. I have a distance of two feet over to the 20 pound force. So two times 20, that is negative from the right hand rule, crossing the R into the F. I have a distance of four feet into the 30 pound force. Again, negative from the right hand rule. And then I have a distance of six feet into E sub Y. And this is equal to zero making sure all your equations are equal to zero in equilibrium. So we have one equation, one unknown. So 40 plus 120 is 160 divided by six. We find that E sub Y happens to be equal to 26.67 pounds. We also know to sum forces in the Y direction equal to zero. We have plus B sub Y um, minus 20 minus 30 plus E sub Y equal to zero. Putting in E sub Y at 26.67, we can find that A sub Y is equal to 23.33 pounds. Sorry, this should have been B sub Y, not A sub Y. Sorry for my misprint there. And so we find out that B sub Y is equal to 23.33 and E sub Y is equal to 26.67. And these are in pounds. Okay, so E sub Y is bigger, but it's not equal to 30. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw my shear moment diagrams. I'm going to pick to draw them directly below my true loading diagram, which is above, bringing down these two feet intervals, which is where all the action's happening. All right, and so here is my axes, X to solve for my shear, V, and all of these values here will be in pounds. All right, so we know that if we don't have any load, we don't have any shear, okay? So from A to B, there is exactly shear equal to zero. At point B, we have an upward force. An upward force means a jump upwards, 23.33. Now, I like to label the points versus labeling the axes and drawing lines to them just because it makes a, a bit cleaner uh, of a diagram. All right, no change between B and C, remaining at 23.33. Then we hit a 20 pound force. We're gonna drop down here to 3.33, just rounding to two decimal points for now. No change between C and D. Okay, and then a 30 pound force. It's gonna drop me down here to negative 26.67. No change between D and E. And look at there, a jump back upwards of 26.67. I also need to zero out at the start and at the end. So there is my shear diagram. Now my moment diagram, I can actually draw before I find the values. Okay, so our moment diagram, uh, here's my axes. So once again, this is an X axis. 
And so I need to start and finish at zero again. Now I have no shear from A to B, therefore my moment diagram is exactly zero. I then pick up a positive shear. Value of the shear is the slope of the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna go up at 23.33 for a distance of two. So 23.33 times two is 46.66. I'm going to continue to go up here very slightly, a slope of 3.33. Value of shear is a slope of your moment. That puts me at a value at the top here of 53.34. Now I could cross check that this is an accurate value by basically by finding this last area here if I wanted to. And we find out that 26.6. times 2 is exactly equal to 53.34. Okay, so a linear decrease, negative shear means a decrease in our moment, and we close to 0. And so that would be my shear and moment. Let me get my moment diagram labeled M. Of course, everything in the M here is in pound times the length unit, which was in feet. So th there would be my shear and moment diagrams for that given loading. Noting I solved my reactions first, so I knew everything. I already had a true loading free by diagram, and therefore I got to drawing. The next example we can take a look at is actually going to be based upon the exact same dimensions of the beam. Okay, an eight foot long beam. I'm just going to switch up the loading here a little bit. And so on this one, we're going to put a support force. You can think coming from a pin or a roller on the left end. So this is a sub Y. We're going to have our other support over here at D. So this is going to be D sub Y. As far as applied forces, we have a distributed load. This distributed load has a value of 100 pounds, right? All pounds are pounds force. This is per foot. And then additionally, we have a couple applied down here at E. That couple has a known value of 200 pound feet. Okay, so a small distributed load, uniform value of 100 pounds per foot, A sub Y, D sub Y, and a couple applied at point E, right? Remember, a couple is a concentrated twist. And so you could think that this would be like attaching a wrench or something torsional to point E and twisting around that point. Um, around an axis is coming out of the screen, right? So we, again, need to solve for reactions. And so this is already representing a free body diagram. And so we can say that. Now, noting when I am going to do the computation this free body diagram, fundamentally, I'm going to replace this 100 pounds per foot with a 200 pound force, right? Because it's acting over two feet, acting through its centroid. So that is the equivalent point force to the 100 pound per foot distributed load. And so I'm going to sum my moments at point A. You can sum your moments at about any point you like. So I have a distance of three feet over to the resultant force there, that 200 pounds. So three times 200. That is negative from the right hand rule. Uh, I am six feet over to D sub Y. That is positive from the right-hand rule, R crossed into F. And then I have a distance of eight feet over to E. Now, the distance to E actually doesn't matter. All I need to do is add in that 200 pound foot. It wouldn't matter if that was applied at E, at B, at C, at D, at least externally. Internally, it would matter. Externally, it does not. So this couple, wrapping your fingers around in the direction of the arrowhead, is going to be a plus 200 right, is its magnitude. No distance is multiplied. Remember, right, it's a concentrated couple. It already has units of pound feet, which is our moment unit. This is equal to zero. My one unknown is d sub y. d sub y from this equation turns out to be 66.66 pounds. And then, of course, we can sum our forces in the y direction. In the y direction, we have a sub y going upwards. We have d sub y going upwards. So we have a minus 200, right? Keep in mind, this is from that distributed load, not from the couple. 
and that's the only other forces. The couple doesn't actually enter into the equation. This equals zero. Substituting my dy of 66.66, we find that ay is equal to 133.33 pounds. Okay, so let me list those values on here. So they're handy. AY is equal to 133.33. DY is equal to 66.66. Okay, so again, we can draw this, this shear and moment diagram directly below our true loading free body diagram, bringing down some lines. Something like that. Then we have an axis here for the shear, which is our x-axis, solving for v. All the v values will be in pounds. All right, so left end, a jump up of 133.33. So mirroring that with our shear, there we are at the shear value coming over. No change between A and B. So once again, this is 133.33. We're now going to decrease at 100 pounds per foot over two feet. So we are going to go from 133.33 right over here to negative 66.67 right dropping 200 100 pounds per foot and then that comes over no change between c and d and we close back to zero with that increase of d sub y of 66.66 right so there between d and e shear is equal to zero so now looking at our moment diagram again an x-axis um, we are going to start and finish at zero because there's no couple on. Oh, I take it back. We have a couple here on the far right end. So as we see that couple, we forecast looking at its arrowhead drawn on the left hand side. It's going to be a drop down to zero from a height of 200. Right, because it's going to be a downward drop. So I'm anticipating at the very end here, basically a drop down to zero, vertical drop. All right, for the first section, I know that my change in my moment, right, this is my moment in pound feet, is equal to the area under the shear. Okay, I'm increasing here at a slope of 133.33 over two feet. Therefore, I end up here at 266.66, which of course is also the area of this, rect or this rectangle here. Now, I do need to find the value here, basically what is x at that location. Another way we can do this is if we know that the slope Right, the slope on this is going to drop 100 for every one meter coming left to right. And so if I need to drop from 133 down to zero, it turns out I am going over a distance of 1.333 meters. Once again, if I'm dropping 100 pounds per foot, and I'm dropping from 133.33, I basically take 133.33 divided by the slope and end up with that distance. That will also then make the distance from here to here, let's write that, 0 0.6667, right? Because it was two, two feet total um, between that interval. Um, and so if I want to find these areas now, this area here, Right, a height of 133.33, a width of 1.33, divided by 2, because it is a triangle. I end up with the area here of 88.88. And then this area here, so height of 66.67, width of 0 0.667, divided by 2, is 22.8. 222, two, two. lots of repeating decimals in this problem. Okay, so a much smaller area there. And let me go ahead, we're on the we're on a roll here. Let's go ahead and find the area of this rectangle. So 66.67 times 2 is 133.33. All right, let's see how those then map onto our moment diagram. Bringing down the location here of my inflection, not my inflection point, but my maxima point going from a positive shear to a negative shear gives me concave down, 
right? So a maximum point there, and then it's going to curve down here, and then it's going to go to a constant value, and then it's going to go flat, right? Zero value of shear gives me no change. And so that's the general shape, and I can go ahead and insert these values. I'm going to move this one here, just give myself a little more space. And so again, I'm saying that this value here is negative 66.67. So if we go from 266.66, and we add in 88.88, right, because the area under my shear is the change in my moment, I end up with a maximum value at that point of 355.55. Okay, so that's basically at that point right there. And then I'm going to drop the area of this little triangle, okay, 22.22. So right here below that point, that's going to give me a value of 333.33. And then I'm going to drop another 133.33, which gives me a value here of 200, which is awesome because I'm going to drop 200 with my couple at the very end. Once again, with this couple, it's either opposite the right-hand rule. So this is a positive from the right-hand rule. So opposite of that is going to be a drop downward. Or again, if you draw this on the left-hand side, we end up with the arrow going downward. Okay, so this is going to drop down and close to zero after that couple. So this is actually enough information just by, by charting the areas and where you got the values from. Um, this would be enough information to grade this problem and know where everything came from. So again, a quick review before we wrap up. As we were solving for our reactions, we actually used the concentrated equivalent value of the distributed load in order to solve for those reactions. But then to draw our shear moment diagram, we, we went back to the true loading um, free body diagram, which included this distributed load here and a couple here on the far end. We ended up finding a shear diagram that started positive, it jumped up, it came down at a constant value of 100 pounds per foot over, and in this last section here, there was no shear value because there is no loading basically to the right of D. For the moment diagram, we knew that it had to start and finish at zero, noting we had a vertical step in the moment diagram due to this couple. So we had a positive value of shear building up here. We hit a maximum point here, adding this area to the area of this triangle, value of 355.55 pound feet. We dropped a bit from this triangle uh, under the x axis and then hit this rectangle here with the area negative 133.33, dropping me to 200. No change in my moment because of zero value of shear and then dropped because of that couple down to zero. Hopefully these were a valuable example to take a look through these shear moment diagrams and I hope you're having an awesome day.